Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. It's time for our weekly recap of the Our Services Aren't Available Right Now. Yeah, that's right, the site was still broken this week. But after madly refreshing the page for 10 minutes, this is all that we had missed. We'll start off with a pair of 335s done up in natural bird burst, both offered for $2,899. I'll be honest here, I was really tempted to pick one of these things up. Because look what they've done here. They put the hummingbird pickguard design on the body, like on an enlarged decal that just encompasses pretty much the entire guitar. And then look at our beautiful pickguard on this thing. It just utilizes one of the flowers from over here in a very tasteful design. Like that light brown, it matches with this real natural vibes. Looks like we've got the BFG style wooden knobs. We've got the really aged pickup covers and bridge, and they even put a butterfly on the bridge pickup. In my opinion, the first one I showed you was the one to get because the butterfly was much more prominent. This looks like, uh-oh, we messed it up. We better try again. Maybe it's just the photo angle, though. The backside of the guitar was nothing too fancy, but to me, this really looked like a satin finish, and that's kind of what turned me off from wanting to get this. But oh, interestingly enough, number two is listed as satin. However, number one was actually listed as gloss. I'm curious if that was a mistake, because by the time I had read that it was actually gloss, I was ready to buy it and it was already gone. So whoever got number one here, please send me a message if that was actually gloss and I should be crying right now. Because 2900 bucks for a unique one? That's actually a discount if it was originally a gloss model, but a slight premium if it originally started as satin. Continuing on here, Gibson went heavy on the 335s this week. Check this one out, it's called Money Magic. It's got the BFG knobs on it once again. We've got a TP6 chrome tailpiece, cream pickup rings. It's a full on refinish, top and back sides included. And this photo really starts to show you how the Money Magic finish will come to life. Basically, take a look at my modern flying V, but have a green undercoat instead of a purplish one. Next, there was a 61 reissue. Doesn't seem to be too fancy except for maybe the added gold hardware, but a nice looking one. We had the return once again of Saddle Brown Metallic. Someone at the demo shop loves putting Saddle Brown on everything. But we've got those really distressed pickup covers on here. It looks like copper color pickup rings to match the finish. We've got the ambered out speed knobs. And this one was bold enough to do a matching headstock on top of it all. But someone at Gibson was proud of them because once again, another Gibson original modified decal. There were a few of these this week. So as of right now, Gibson hasn't actually said what that means, but you'll notice it has not been stamped modified. So in case you've missed my previous episodes, I'm betting they put these on the ones that they are most proud of because not everyone gets this. And they're mimicking the old Gibson original prototype stamp. Then a couple of weeks back, there was a 335 called Big Red. This time we have Bigger Red. So look at this. It's all red. Literally everything, including the darn fretboard. It looks like it's been lacquered over. So you guys remember the Widows? This thing takes it to an extreme by just literally even painting over the darn nut. <laughs> I love it. I mean, it looks like it's still a satin finish, so not my favorite. And you could call it lazy just spraying the entire thing red. But they were proud of it. Another Gibson Original Modified. I wonder who bought that one. I would pay a handsome premium for something like that. That's it for the 335s. Now let's check out the Les Paul. So we had a special tribute in what they called Elegant Shimmer. What's interesting about this one is it almost encapsulates the life cycle of a finish called Sparkling Burgundy. Starts off nice and red, kind of shimmery, and then it turns into like a dull orangish brown. So <laughs> this just has that whole color change effect going on. Nice and dark fretboard, but I'm betting the photos don't do this one exact justice. This Les Paul Studio went off the deep end, 2400, and wow, that is in your face. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite crazy. I didn't realize just how sparkly that was until I zoomed in here. And you've got the racing stripes, you've got the clear knobs, you've got the blue pickup rings, all chromed out, no pick guard or anything. We even get the pearl tuning tips here, but no super sparkle headstock. And it is a full refinish. They just didn't do any racing stripes back here. It's hard to tell, but that looks like that might be the Gibson modified decal right there too. Yes, indeed it is, but good luck reading that serial number. That's a metal flake finish. But man, that's really strange to see Schaller style tips on Grover tuners. And while yes, this one's not a Les Paul, it fits in the same theme though. Lowrider Green Explorer. I was kind of tempted to pick this thing up. It reminded me more so of a Spotlight Special or like a neck through design going on here, kind of Firebird vibes. But then we've got these diagonal stripes within the super metallic flake sparkle finish. And just like the last one, it was also a full on refin. And another one from this week that got the special decal. 
That one was offered at 3100 Next, for 2300 we have Abstract Splatter. All right, let's be real. I would never buy this guitar, but I can kind of appreciate it for its weird, quirky art sense. Like, I'm sure there's an art collector or an artist out there that does stuff like this that would not mind having this on their instrument. But it's kind of a, a niche market, I would say. However, for what it was going for, I would say they did a pretty good job. They even gave it a pinkish Gibson logo. And then when I first saw the back, I was like, ah, man, they didn't do the back too? But I think I get it. You know, canvases, they're kind of like a light brown color. What artist paints the back of their painting? So it just makes sense to leave it alone. But they did go as far as putting tortoiseshell back plates on it, so that was interesting. Next, we have a Smokehouse Burst Studio. Might not look like much at first, but then you notice, oh, random piece knob and on-off switch. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. Which apparently that is a mini kill switch. Yeah, that's going to be hard to do Buckethead style riffs on. But that's two volumes in a master tune. Next, a 50 standard done up in yellow jacket finish. This gives me serious Tak Matsumoto signature guitar vibes. He had something kind of similar to this in canary yellow. So they just made it kind of like a bumblebee. You've got the black, you've got the yellow, you've got the stripes. And you've got even more black on the back. Oh my goodness, come on! I'm upset. Why is there not a yellow stinger on this? Like, it makes sense. You called it a yellow jacket. I actually had an idea to custom order something called the Queen Bee. The initial design was rejected, but hey, maybe one day the Queen Bee will live. But it's very similar in complexity to my April Fools of the previous year. This classic in ebony had some interesting modifications to it, including a clear pickguard, knobs, and pole pieceless pickups. And then to round out the Les Pauls, we had banana cream special and pumpkin pie special. So banana cream, it's kind of like a dark yellow color. It's got the cream because it's supposed to be like a pie. Nothing too much has changed on our headstock except for our truss rod cover, which they also did to the back plates on this. And hey, what do you know? A pie gets a stinger, <laughs> but not the yellow jacket. Yeah, that one was pretty interesting. But now let's talk pumpkin pie here. I don't know about pumpkin pies in your guys' area, but mine aren't red. They're like a reddish brown orange color. But maybe they do things a little bit differently down in Nashville. Because we have more of a red burst here. Just a straight up red see-through pick guard. Not quite tortoise shell, but similar. Headstock once again left alone. And once again, we have a stinger. Now this stinger is not quite as pointy, but it's another one with the Gibson original modified decal. So apparently the demo shop guys like pumpkin pie is a heck of a lot better than banana cream because this one didn't get that. SG Territory, we had a 60th anniversary one, but they really just kind of decked it out with a whole bunch of different stuff. So it's a standard, but they put the vibrola of the custom on and then swapped our pickups around, but left the back relatively unchanged. But check out this one, Apple Flavor Metallic. So like three or four months back, we had a blue version of this. Essentially, they take a regular one of these, it's all red, they strip down the finish, but then the pores of the wood still retain some of the red, but then they spray it over a different color so you can still kind of see the red poking through in many areas. It definitely does remind you of like a candy apple here. But I think what I like best about this is the fact that Geez, that's a dark fretboard, and that's not even been conditioned yet. And of course, they also did the back. Now, the back of the neck looks like it took the finish a lot better. But this also kind of reminds me of the rhubarb that they just did, the whole rockin' rhubarb from a couple of weeks ago. I guess that was actually a reference to Les Paul. He went by a similar stage name before he became famous with his current one. But this was an interesting SG. And in case green and red's not your favorite thing, here's Barry Razzle Dazzle. Not quite the exact same thing, but very similar vibes here. Hey, we get a matching purple sparkle headstock. I like that. And then it's a full on refinish with a clear backplate. But apparently it was good enough to get the Gibson original modified decal. I told you guys there were a whole bunch of them this week. I mean, this was a killer week. They did great. It's a shame that hardly anybody could see them without getting these errors. Which, by the way, Gibson, uh, HTTP error 503 is what's coming through. I went ahead and Googled it for you, and it says your servers can't handle the request. But I'm sure it's way more complicated than that. I just hope one day they fix it. Because let's face it, when Gibson designed their new website, I doubt they designed it for high traffic. Like, sure, when a new model comes out, there's going to be more people on here. But they didn't design this for people to click a page and then be constantly refreshing it, right, when they think it's time to update. I know a lot of diehard fans of the Gibson Mod Collection are starting to get really upset that the site is just not working properly. 
And the last one for the mod collection this week is the 70s Flying V and once again, Swamp Brass. They're really digging Swamp Brass and Saddle Brown Metallic. Which I'm betting these things look really cool in person, but not so well in photos. Got your whole tortoiseshell pick guard going on. Can't quite tell what they tried to put on the pickup covers, but apparently those are supposed to be gold skeleton rock hand pickup covers. Okay, I see it now. We get a matching headstock. But then here, here's the money shot for that one. All right, so it's a like a color changing finish. It'll go from dark to kind of gold hues. So maybe it's kind of like an oil slick finish. All right, so that was a crazy week. I mean, there was literally something for just about anyone this time. But now let's check out the demo shop. We'll start with the sold ones. A killer deal on this 1957 reissue. I mean, these things are expensive. Look at the price here on the screen. Compared to $47.99, yeah, I can live with a few small blemishes, which includes some finish checking and scratches by the knobs, and it looks like they didn't quite get the finish on the neck. We had one of the SG Raven tributes. Looks pretty cool with the all chromed out look, and obviously your rich light fretboard, your dot inlays. We had a drop of more, more Brazilian Dream Les Pauls. I'm really curious, how long is this gonna go on for? There were five additional ones this week. But I've gotta say, the more and more of these things that show up in the shop makes me feel bad for them and want to review and document it. So, all right guys, I bit the bullet. I bought one of these. We're gonna review and demo it. We will be seeing that very soon. And they had a couple other nice slash models, like 2400 for this Appetite Burst. Maybe not exactly what I think when I think Appetite, as far as the style of Flame Top, but it's close. A good top nonetheless. Here was a pretty screaming deal on a November Burst. Also a nice deal on a Victoria Gold Top. We had another Silver Burst this week that had a misstamped serial number. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong on this, or maybe they're actually changing it so these things have black serial numbers for 2022. But usually in the past, they would do white. However, I don't think the black looks too bad when they get it on the silver part. So maybe that's something people will talk about in 20 years as to, oh yeah, you want to get a 2022 because the serial number blends in a little bit better. You don't want any of those crappy white ones, or maybe it's the other way around. That is how history is made, by change. This black custom, I mean it wasn't a screaming deal or anything, but I wanted to share it with you because it looks like they had to replace the nut on this thing. They got some finish damage during that process that they had to touch up. I feel like the price probably should have been a little bit lower on that. And then I really like this 50 standard P90 gold top. It's been gilded out. You even get the gold Firebird pickups, I do believe, because we don't have any pulpy showing. You could have easily told me this was a Les Paul Deluxe and I would have believed you. But then you flip it over to the back and wow, that's really bleached out looking mahogany. It's got an interesting vibe. You also get a bit of a candy cane striped neck. And then this tribute had a pretty decent top for one of these things with what looks like a little bit of flame figuring in that neck. Got a custom color, Ambismith Pink. I'll be honest, I don't know what that's referencing. Maybe, I'm sure it's referencing something, but Google was no help. They just suggested bismuth, which is a chemical element that apparently looks something similar to this. So I guess, yeah, we, we've got some pink. We've got a little bit of green over here. And with the guitar being pink and black, I, I don't know if it's an exact replica, but it's better than calling it Eraser Pink again. But Eraser Racer Pink was a pretty cool finish, but Keep going through this, keep your eyes peeled. First off, it's funny that this probably started life as TV yellow because you can still see it right there. But second, a government case? Those are worth big money. We saw it on that Flying V a couple of weeks ago, but the Les Paul version is worth way more. You don't find these for sale separately. Oh man, yeah fantastic deal. That's like a $500 case. I definitely would have bought that. That was a great deal. So whoever got that, if you don't care about the limited edition case, sell that thing off. Someone will pay you 500 bucks for it. And at the time of recording, these were still available. We had a beautiful DC Rust Les Paul Access. Maybe not my favorite top we've ever seen here. I mean, it's got a really wide flame pattern right here and then everything else is just pinstripey. I like the wood grain lines that they've got going under it. I don't quite care too much for the Floyd Rose version, but some people dig those things. But I really love the back on this one. Rust is such a good finish. Check out my SG Elegant. I actually still have that thing. I am blown away that has not sold yet because it has a very similar back to it. That is a fantastic one. But this has very similar vibes with our access heel back here. Very cool example. This 58 reissue, I mean, I think it's like $500 off, but it's got a nice top to it if you like wood grain and a little bit of flame mixed in. This unburst got a little bit dark and then they really blacked it out to even bring that out even more. Interesting, very wide top to this one as well. 
And then bright giant cherry back. Okay. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that one. Then we had a 59 reissue. I mean, it's a dirty lemon, but it's like extra dirty. But the back is pretty exotic on this one. I mean, just look at that close up. The wood grain with the dark and the red. It looks nice. And then they had two of these 60th anniversary SGs. Fantastic deal. I think they were, what, 6,500 new? So great price. So to end out tonight's episode, let's check out the European Demo Shop. They had a whopping 22 new guitars. That rivals the mod collection this week that had about 21 guitars. So we had a Desert Burst Traditional, a Smokehouse Burst Les Paul Studio, a 60s J45 Original Acoustic Guitar, a standard Les Paul Classic done up in ebony. That's a really good price for one of those, especially including all taxes and shipping. Wow. SG Junior, an Epiphone Texan, one of their Epiphone USAs if you're wondering why that thing's a $2,000 instrument. A 61 SG Standard in a really dark finish. An SG Tribute for just under a grand. A Bourbon Burst Standard for 21. A 50 Standard also for 21. A beautiful Dove. Man, Doves are my favorite Gibson acoustic model. They just look right to me. And they get their whole multi-piece neck, flame maple everywhere. Love, 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 love the vintage style dove truss rod cover because, you know, reminds you of a dovetail right there and it's got the black outline around it. Although I will say these reissue style ones don't quite capture the vibe of the 60s variants. Another studio, a special, a 335 studio in Ginger Burst, a Southern Jumbo, another classic for a good price, SG Standard, and another studio. And perhaps the coolest ones of the run, the ESLP P90. You don't see this version too often. They're asking 3000, which is a bit high, but I still remember when they blew these types of things out for about 1500. That's just not the current market anymore. Finding the P90 variation is kind of rare. Apparently stamping demo into that guitar didn't take very well because that just damaged the finish even more. But semi hollow, gold top, P90s, it's an interesting take on the ESLP. Definitely try one before you buy one, would be my best advice. Because if you go into these thinking, oh man, it's just like a Les Paul, you're gonna be disappointed. But if you go into this thinking, it's like, okay, it's like an ES330 meets Les Paul, because they're extremely light. The biggest thing I have against these is the way that the neck joins to the body, because they stick up so much. It, it just changes the entire feel of the guitar. But if you're used to that on some other Gibson models, you're probably gonna really like that. Now in a blind recording test, I did one of those a long time ago, I thought they did stack up, but they definitely do not feel anywhere near the same. If you want something that looks like this, but still feels like a regular Les Paul, seek out a 90s Bantam and or Florentine Les Paul Custom. And the last one for this week, Gibson Les Paul Custom Bolivian. That caught my attention. That probably means it has Bolivian rosewood on it which is a fancy way of saying Pau Ferro, essentially. Or so I've heard, but it's from 2019, so that's within the rich light era. But yeah, zoom in there. You can see kind of almost like Brazilian-esque attributes with that nice red streak in it. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. Maybe not as dark as the first fret made it seem, but I really think these types of things will become collectible in the future because rich light, the main era for it was 2011 through 2019, right? And in the grand scheme of things, that's not that long, eight years. So in 50 years, people might go, hey, why don't we try these weird substitutes from that point in time? All right, troglodytes, that's all for this update. I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. It was me.